To be a great offense at the end of the year, you show what you've done, and it's not stats. There's big rings and there's big trophies that great offenses have. Statistical offenses can have those numbers, which show that statistically you, you didn't win the games you needed to win. So it's about winning those games. So if we're going to be a great offense, we'll find a way to take care of the ball, take care of the quarterback, get in the end zone, and win games, all of them. That's what great offenses do. Yeah, I think right now, like, the two best guys we got different roles and jobs is where um, um, Cade and, and Mitch Rossi are. They're our two most consistent, strongest guys. And then you got G and, and Joe figuring out that next niche and how good are you without the ball and blocking and what's the blocking matchups and then what's the route running. And, you know, they've been a little, there's a little that you see it and then a little inconsistency as they're growing. So I think both those guys are kind of jabbing back and forth. And then behind that, you go Sam and Bennett. You know, he's made, he's made some plays down the field. Quite honestly, he needs to be better down the field. Uh, but he's also been very good underneath. Had a great play the other day. He ran right through a couple defenders like a bowling ball and smashed him up. And he's 257. He's playing really good. Was voted captain, one of the best leaders on our team. Had a championship performance in the scrimmage. Very, very physical. He's going to have a great year. I mean, he's pretty. he's a pretty good player now. I've seen a couple. He's pretty good now. I mean, we've got some, they're deep, and they just keep coming at you at waves, and it's just, they just keep coming over the walls, and it's just, you know, playing with some confidence, and playing behind their pads, and they're, it's really, it's really, I, in my first year here, you know, I, you, you just felt like Taekwon and Sam and, and Chase, and you just felt those guys, and I don't know if there's anyone individually as collectively as good as a couple of superstars, but you just feel the, 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 the defensive presence, and I think Tommy and Steele and Cody are starting to play a lot of confidence. Now, I think the secondary guys are starting to understand those fits, and you know, they're so much more quicker in the hole, and I just think you feel a very early confident Defensive bunch, it's, it's, it's a long way to go. I'm sure your coach would tell you that, but man, it's just, I mean, it's out there. It's a, it's a daggum fist fight. I think he tried really, really hard to be a great team player in the offseason. Now he's been captain or voted that way. I think that exponentially grows, but I think he was like that back in spring. I think he knew he was the quarterback. I think he knew he was had a chance to play well. I think he knew he had great supporting cast. I think he knew Coach Day was going to doctor it up and, and th those balls, that passing game was going to work. But I think he knew no matter what happened last year, it still won the championship that all great quarterbacks want. And I think he's done everything he can prior to even being named captain to be a team leader and be a little bit more vocal with telling guys that wasn't good enough. And doing it where it's not coming, he's been probably more, more outspoken than any player the last couple of years, just encouraging or also demanding that he expects someone to do better. It's been great to see. We cannot be a team that can only play with the right hand. To be the team we want to be, we got to play with both hands. And that means we're committed to running the ball. And running the football is a scheme. Running the football is fundamentals. But running the football is a mindset. And as well as we throw the football, which we all know has a chance to be extremely good, because of Coach Day, the skill, the quarterback, yes, it's got a chance to be really good. But to be the great team, we're trying our darndest to sell our offense on the attitude of balance is greatness. Mitch is much more valuable than I think people realize. He is a solid, solid component of what we do. I mean, we've got with those receivers, maybe 11, 12, 13, 14 other. He's one of our 14, 15 best players on offense. He 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 finds a way to get. He'll, he'll be on the field to some degree, and we'll have a good and we'll have a decent spot there for us. Yeah, I was here. I was you know I had a lot of work to do on my shoulder uh, with Adam Stewart and the training staff. So I was here. Um, you know I was working on. It, it was hard because I wasn't able to play football for a long time. So you know some of the stuff that was natural wasn't natural anymore, and I was just working you know to get get back to normal basically. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, um, kind of the different stories that we have in the tight end room now versus kind of being prototypical guys before, you know. But, um, you know, I, I think we have a great room, and I, um, I'm, I'm optimistic about our play this year. You know, it's good to have Cade back. Um, he's a good buddy to have, you know. Line up next to him is encouraging, so I'm just I'm excited about it. What makes Cade different? A lot of things make Cade different, for sure. Um, you know, I just like, uh, you know, he's, he's, you can tell that he has a really good upbringing. He is, you know, he's a dude that I want in my foxhole type guy. So, you know, 
he's not going to blame me for something. He's not going to throw me under the bus. You know, we're, we're working together out there, and I can trust him, and it's, it's great having him out there. Um, probably thought I'd be working in an office somewhere by this point, like investment banking or something like that. Um, just trying to get a finance degree, and now, you know, I'm looking at playing in the NFL next year. So it's definitely been um, a change in mindset over the years. Um, but you know, I wouldn't trade it. It's been an awesome journey. For How like, many balls you gonna catch this year, caged over? They want to know. Forty. No, I'm, I'm just forty. Forty. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know how many balls I'm going to catch. Huh? Every many they throw to me, it's something I'm going to catch. Every game, every game, right? Yeah, I'll get like three or four during the pregame. Uh, it means a lot. Uh, it's definitely, I think, uh, I really I got no words. I mean, I love this team, love the people around me, and uh, I'm just really just a blessing and kind of a feeling that really hasn't hit me yet, to be honest with you. Man, we just want to be tough, to be honest with you. Uh, I mean, we're kind of, I mean, we know we got athletes, we know we got skill. Uh, but I mean, I think toughness. I mean, like Coach Day's talked about. I mean, that's that's a learned trait. I think we're really coming along in that aspect. I mean, we're trying to come out there and be fast, physical, and be as talented as we are. But I mean, we're trying to go out there. We're trying to get after people. So I mean, we're trying to get tough and just win ball games. I was just talking to my mom and dad. They come up to for the family like brunch thing yesterday, and it's. I mean, you talk about where you were a year ago, two years ago. I mean, sometimes you're sitting there, you're like, uh, like, what am I doing? Like, why am I here? To be honest with you, and. To the point where I feel right now, where I mean, I feel comfortable, I feel good, I feel confident about where I'm at, and that's really the biggest part for me. All right, uh, Mitch is tough. Uh, he's good. He's a good ball player. I mean, been around a while, so I mean, he's got a good IQ for the game and stuff. So I mean, I think just coming off the ball together, uh, he's going to have a lot of velocity and a lot. I mean, hopefully a lot of movement to what we got to do. It's had to do with conversations about. I mean, where, uh, what's the, what's the end term goal for me? I mean, I don't know how many teams anymore want a six foot five, two hundred sixty pound middle linebacker anymore. I think thirty years ago I would be playing middle linebacker and it wouldn't be a question about it. But I think with today's game and the way things are, uh, and the way our defensive line was and playing the four down defense and having all those guys out there, uh, and then having the experience over at tight end already and feel and looking at tight end numbers, combine numbers about where you stand and where you come out and stuff if you came out. Uh, it just made more sense to go over there and play tight end, and really, I just I came back with a much clearer mindset than when I came over the first time. I mean, yeah, you, I mean, you look about where you can excel. I mean, where people are going to want you to play at, where your I mean, where your prototypical body is going to be at, and what you can do. I think tight end was really just the best decision for me. Oh God, that defense is Knowles is. I mean, that's the top of the line, dude, right there. I would I'll go to war with that dude any day of the week. Uh, I love to do. I love playing for him. Uh, when I was over there, we still, I mean, we got a great relationship now, even with me being over here. Uh, I would say, if not the smartest mind on a defensive side of the ball I've ever seen in my life. And just the people that he, the way he's got those guys playing over there, how fast and how confusing the block. I mean, there's the looks and looks and looks and looks and looks. It's just, they're unbelievable. And he's, that's a, t a test to him and a test to all the dudes over there that are playing for him. I'm still getting there. Like I, like I said earlier, this position is not something that you, you know, you jump. I'm growing to learn this. It's not something that you jump over and, and learn. And you know, I'm ready to play tight end. And you, you know, the next day you're, you know, you're great. And that's not that you got to completely erase that mindset if you want to go into this position. There's so many jobs. I have to be a right tackle, and I also have to be a wide receiver running against these small, small, fast DBs. And I got to be big enough to block these big DNs. So it's, it's a lot of jobs that you got to be able to do. And it's something that's. Uh, you got to be ready to be in for the long haul. You know, this is a position that I probably won't be my best until, you know, six, seven, five, six, seven years from now. You know, when I'm, you know, three, three years in the NFL or three, four years in the NFL, it's not going to be a, a an overnight thing. So, um, the biggest thing is that I, that I know I'm, me I'm mentally prepared for that. So that's what's important. That transition from receiver to tight end, it kind of gets a gray in there, but that's not where I want to live. You know, what I'm saying I'm living to be a tight end. You know, I'm here to, I mean, uh, I don't know how many of you guys have seen the Kanye West documentary when everyone would call him a producer. He said, he said, Kanye, you're, you're a great producer, man. You're such a good producer. And Kanye said, no, I, I want to be a rapper. You know what I'm saying? I want to be, I'm a rapper. I want to be the greatest rapper ever. And so that's where I feel like I don't want to be, I'm not a receiver that plays tight end. I'm a tight end that plays tight end and I want to be a great tight end, you know? So that's where I live.